Hi everyone, let me know if you can hear me and see me. Um, I'm just looking at my camera and it looks as though this is quite blurred. I don't know if it's an internet thing or what, but I've cleaned the lens, so is it blurred for you? Does it look out of focus? Whoops, it is easy. I'll just bring it down here a little bit. Oh good, everyone can see it, that's fab. Hello everybody, just come on slightly early so we can say hi and see who's on. So let's have a look who we've got. We've got Blue, Mandy, Mel, um, Anne, Kelly. Oh Kelly, sorry that you're not well. I hope you get better soon, don't worry about it. You can always watch it later on if you want to. Um, who else have we got? We've got Claire, Kathy, Kessie. Uh, I don't want to miss anybody. We've got Kathleen, Margarita, Sandra, and Happy. Happy, happy Gnosis. <laughs> Christine, hello. We've got Angela. Hi, Angela. And we've got Sue as well. Thank you for reminding me of your name because I had forgotten. You know what I'm like. We've got M. Hello, M. Let me just make sure that I'm right to the end of my live on here so that I can see everybody's chat straight away. Hi, Josephine. Hi, Zoe. So we're just waiting for everybody who wants to join. Thank you. I've got to talk about this background. It's been a bit of a... Um, a bit of a nightmare actually. Hi Paula. I'm just going to go off this and on again so that I can make sure I'm up to date with everybody's comments. I think that's right. So we've got Louise. I'm Victoria. Hello from Barcelona. Oh my goodness. You know I find it mind-blowing that everybody is watching from all corners of the globe. It's amazing. And we've got the lovely Jeanette. I hope everybody is well this evening and you've had a good week. Beautiful Barbara has joined. Hi Barbara. Yeah, I hope you all had a good week. I've had a pretty steady one. Um, Nothing much to report, but have done the background, as you can see. So, yeah, just to explain a bit more about this background, I bought this stuff. It's called Black 3.0 and it's by Culture Hustle. And it's supposed to be the blackest black that ever blacked. <laughs> um, it's super flat, super matte, ultra pigmented acrylic paint. And it's supposed to... It's supposed to absorb something like 99.99% of light. So it's supposed to be completely and utterly black, not reflective of any light at all. I gave it a good shake. It was a brand new bottle. Um, I poured it out and I made sure that it's, you know, was the right consistency. It seemed to be. And then as soon as I started painting with it, I realised how awful of a paint this is. And I know that's that's a really you know, extreme word to say, but unless I'm using it wrong, which I think, I don't think you really can use paint wrong, or it somehow has gone off. I don't know if that's how this paint is meant to be, but it was not good at all. So I noticed straight away that the paint, although it was obviously liquid, it felt very dry. It didn't look dry and it didn't feel dry on the first stroke, but it seemed to dry very, very quickly. And I keep having to pick up more paint and more paint and more paint. And it was also filled with like these little, little grainy bits. And it was just not very nice to paint with at all. And it kept clumping my brush up and it was just nasty. So I let it dry. And I don't know whether you'll be able to see this. Ignore these marks. I'm going to tell you about these in a minute. 
but I don't know whether you'll be able to tell, but this paint, it's so bumpy and lumpy. And if I just put my thumb over it like that, it comes off on my thumb. It almost feels like velvet, but it looks, it looks very, um, very bumpy. It's not smooth at all. And yeah, I did not get on with it. And it's really, really creased the page. Now I know that sometimes that happens, but this one is very, very creased. So yes, um, I cannot recommend Black 3.0 paint, unfortunately. It's very expensive. I mean, I got mine slightly cheaper because it was um, somebody who'd bought it and then didn't use it. So it was brand new. Maybe it's old. I don't know. There's no... Let's see, have we got a date? BN number. No, I don't... None of those numbers make any sense as a date, but... Um, yeah, it's very expensive. I think it's like £35 just for this, and this is what? doesn't even say how much there is in here, but it's not a very big bottle, as you can see. So, cannot recommend that at all. Hi, everybody that's joined. Yeah, it was not very nice at all. I'm so shocked, really, because you would think for that price point and for the amount of... Um, the amount that you see it promoted and advertised as being like this amazing paint, did not like it at all. So, as I was saying, I've got these little black marks on here, which you can probably, hopefully, see are different. It's not as deep of a black. That's one thing I can say about the black 3.0 is it is a very, very deep, dark black. This one, as you can see, is what I just tried to cover up some of the black 3.0 that hadn't quite covered the page properly you can see here and here and then at the bottom as well is this one so i have um seen this on many people's channels including suzanne barbara and a couple of other people and they've all really recommended this paint it is cheaper i wouldn't say it's cheap but it's cheaper than the black 3.0 by far and it is so smooth. Oh my goodness. So I tested it on the back of the book because I didn't want to just test it on here because of the surface being all rough. But I tested it in the back. This is the, the sample and you're not really going to be able to tell, but it is just so smooth. I mean, I could literally just sit and do that. It's, it's, it feels so soft, so smooth. There's no lumps and bumps. And yeah, I think I'm definitely going to be using that from now on. It's a very, very good recommendation. So thank you to those who have used it on their channel and recommended it. It's the Lefranc Bourgeois Paris Flash Emulsion. Um, I'm going to have a look and see if this comes in other colours, because if they're all as smooth and as velvety and soft as this one, I would like it in other colours. So, yes, let me just catch up on some comments. Better with black pan pastel. Yeah, black pan pastel is good, but then obviously it's a pastel, so you've got to set it or whatever. It's, you know, very dusty. Um, so I wanted something that was going to gonna cover well, very good coverage and be smooth. And yeah, the black 3.0 was not it. Yeah, I've, I've seen it advertised all the time, Paula. I see it, you know, not on a daily basis, but very frequently on the Facebook newsfeed this black 3.0 getting um, advertised and like I said un unless it's I've got a dud bottle it's it's not good at all oh really I haven't seen that comparison video from Barbara I'll have to watch that one but if this one won then I'm already I'm already over to the dark side literally <laughs> black paint oh hi Nana not yet brave enough to do black but I will eventually I am slow oh, well you'll get there you'll get there just experiment Lurking as eating supper. I've just had a cob, a ham cob, for my supper. Oh. Is the Lefranc paint archival? I don't know. Extra fine. It's got three stars on it, and I'm thinking, could that mean something to do with light fastness? Um, what does it say on the back? Vinyl emulsion, extra fine, velvety, high covering power, ultra matte multimedia. Can't see anything about that. Let's see if it has a scent. Oh yeah, it's quite, it smells 
fairly strong. It, it smells like a paint that you would buy for your walls. So like if you can imagine when you've painted your house, your emulsion paint, it smells like that. But it's not badly strong. Tested the Deco Art Ebony Black and it is smooth and does not come off. Will it eventually crack? Haven't tried that one. Maybe somebody else in the chat has. It's exactly what I'm afraid of doing the backgrounds. Well, yeah, I understand that because we don't want to ruin our books. But at the same time, we've got to experiment, haven't we, to, to find these things out. So, yeah, exactly. As Barbara says, try it on a page that you, you're you not really worried about ruining. Or even if you've got a book that's got a testing page at the back or the copyright page or anything like that, you can just give it a swatch. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful paint. So yes, as you can see, we have blacked off the background and now we've only got the windows and the flowers to do. So that will be it finished. I was kind of wondering whether the, the glow effect around this castle has sort of disappeared a little bit because of the black. It almost looks like a sticker, doesn't it, that I've just cut out and put down. I don't really know if there's that much of a, a glow effect anymore. So I was thinking, could we could we possibly use some pan pastel in white or in a, a very light yellow colour to go around the edge to make it a bit more of a softer glow, like a haze? But I don't know how it's going to res respond on top of this very, very rough paint. And you can see it's just coming off of my fingers. So we can either try that or we can leave it as it is so uh, what do you guys think do you think um it looks okay as it is i'm gonna put some white you know white gel pen dots as i always do or some kind of thing on the background just to make it look like it's floating in the night sky yeah that's what i was thinking laura just to smudge something around the edge like a pastel so yeah, should we give it a go then? We might as well. I mean, I've kind of messed up on the background anyway using this paint, so we might as well just give it a go and see what it what it does. Oh, pan pastels are meant to be used on paper matte paper, which is very rough. Okay, so it might work super well then. Let's give it a go. Let me get my pan pastels. So I need... I don't think I've got like um, a yellow that's going to be as greeny and as neon as that. Yeah, do you know what I mean, Margarita? It does feel like it's the glow's disappeared, but at the same time, I didn't want to leave it blank, the background, because I think it would look a bit just like it was... There was It was just kind of stuck on the page and there was no, no surrounding environment for it, if that makes sense. So let me see if I can find a white. What's this? Oh, that's the colourless. I've got a white on the bottom. It's got some purple on it, though. And then I'm going to need something to do their doings with aren't I so let me have a look I'm gonna put a new tip on this because this is full of green I mean it shouldn't matter too much because we've got a green background anyway but let me zoom you in just a little bit more and I'm gonna put a new tip on this Let's go for one of these more triangular ones at the bottom. Just bought the first few pan pastels last week. What do you think of them, Kim? They're, they're incredibly pigmented. Like, I'd only used normal soft pastel sticks before pan pastel, and I couldn't believe how little you needed because they're just so, so pigmented. So I'm just, I, I always have problems trying to put these on. I just do it really slowly, otherwise I'll rip them. Hello, Emily. Emily's lurking because school pickup time. Okay, so I think that's on there as good as it's going to get. So let's give it a go then. pick up some of the pastel on the end of the tool and then see what happens. Oh, just 
blown it all over the page. We need a little bit more on the very edge so that it blends a bit better. See, I'm blowing it all away and it's kind of clinging to the black. Let me see if I can show you. Can you see all the little bits that's clinging to the black and you can't get them off because it's so rough? sure what I think about it really yet I suppose what I'll do is um do the white and then I'll probably use a clean one to make it look a little bit more hazy at the edges remove it with a paintbrush good idea let me try I've got this one it's like a fan brush I think I'm making more of a mess to be honest it's just clinging to it I don't think I don't even know if I could like erase it from the black no well it is what it is if we're, this is all an experiment anyway so we're just having a bit of fun we're not trying to create something for like um you know a tutorial or anything where I'd be really worried if it went wrong this is just a bit of fun, isn't it, on a, on a live stream? But yeah, it's just nasty, that background paint. Hi, Emma. Barbara says, look at the dots of Pampastel that you're blowing away. It's very beautiful. You could add some dots. Yeah, I suppose we could sort of make it seem like it's meant to be there with, with other Posca dots. But this is just, I mean, there's a, like a, almost a crater of paint at the edge here. Laura says, add a star on top and make the white you smudged the shine coming off it. Yeah, because that almost looks like a shine, the, the um, powder that I've blown across there. Good thinking, Batman. As the paper is rough, the brush pushes the crumbs into the paper. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. I suppose really what I should have done instead of going all in straight away is test that black paint <laughs> before I applied it but um, I'm not one for practice and things I'll just go straight in gung-ho and see what happens so I think I've put it all around the glowing areas I'll just put a bit more here it's just not taking there for some reason did you teach yourself to colour um yes I suppose so I definitely watch tutorials and things because I think it's really, um, really handy to, to watch when you're starting something is to see how other people do it. But I suppose, yeah, I suppose so. My particular style anyway. Looks a bit smoky now, I see potential. <laughs> the Lefranc paint would go over your black and smooth it. Well, that's what I tried to do on the little bits that I showed you, but it hasn't made a difference to the roughness. So I thought I'm not going to waste the new black. Have you tried the Faber-Castell Pit Pastels? Yes. Yes, a while ago. I think I've still got them. Yeah, I'm sure I have. Um, testing in live video is the best way to show others that we succeed our pages with attempts and failure. Exactly. Because, I mean, if you've got a channel that's 
very slick and very well edited and everything looks perfect it's not realistic is it so as much as i love those videos and the um the time and everything that goes into them i think it almost can put you off because you think gosh mine will never look like that you know so yeah i understand that's probably a good thing yeah, I did review them. I can remember doing it. I just couldn't remember if it was those particular ones, but I've definitely still got them. Yeah, I have. They're in they're in the drawer with the Prismacolor ones. Um, okay, so I've kind of cleaned off the end of this tip a little bit. I'm going to see if we can get any movement on the edges with just a clean tip. Just to haze it out a little bit more. I mean, it looks pretty mystical anyway, so I think the effect is, it's adding to it, but it's not its not what I would have chosen it to look like, you know, but um, we're going to make it work. So I'm just using the clean edge of the tool and seeing if we can make it look a bit more misty. It is now a mystical Irish castle, yes. Begun with the idea of a haunted castle. Yes, we did. It could still be a haunted castle. I think it's more of a magical castle, though. Because um, you know me, if I was going to do something haunted, it would be properly, properly spooky. <laughs> Whereas this one, I feel like it's... It's more of a, a mystical kind of page rather than a, a scary page. Do you have the pan pastel blender? I do. Good thinking, actually. I just wonder if just going round it with a clean one like I'm doing now would suffice for what we want. Because I think even the blender sometimes that feels like it's got some pigment in it, even though it's not meant to do. But I've noticed that before. So the blender is this one so it looks almost identical to the white but it's called number 101 no it isn't it's called 010 colorless blender and it supposedly is colorless but it still i feel has some pigment to it because you can see it So I'm hoping that that's made it a little bit better. I like the smoky effect. That's kind of what I wanted in the first place. That's what I was going for. I'm just going to add a little bit more here. Because it's so cracked, the background, it's, it's struggling to leave any kind of smooth result. So let me see if I can pull out some of that. Trying to make it look like a light shining. I want it to be quite a blurred effect. Don't want it to be, you know, a perfect stripe of white. Softening the edge, I've done that with white when using pastel sticks. Yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm going for. I mean, if you could, it probably looks better on screen than it looks in real, actually. Um, I might just bring it up to camera so you can see what I'm saying. Let me just put these away because they're going to blow all over the shop. Thank you, Gina. <clears throat> it's got that misty look, yeah. Right, so let me bring it up to camera for you. Can you see how... It's like cracked and there's like a big, I can, I can flick it, you know, the edge of the paint. It's so thick and nasty. But 
it is what it is. So I think that worked pretty well. Um, we'll see what it looks like at the end when I've added in dots and things. It might not be so obvious to the eye that it's a bit of an error. So we'll see. Put these away. Yeah, Sandra, thank you. That's that's kind of what I was looking for. And I think when I did the black background, it got rid of the glowing look. And hopefully this has just bought it back a bit. So, um, OK, let's think about the windows then. I did say last week that I thought it might be a good idea to do them in purple. So it's like glowing purple coming out the windows. Because I think if we do them green, it might just be lost in all the other green what do you reckon i'm going to zoom in as much as i can for this as well because the windows are teeny tiny but i've still got my purples out so we were using the faber castell polychromos and it was mauve 249 and manganese violet 160 so i think we'll have a go with that on the windows So I'm just going to take the mauve and these are really tiny spaces as well so we haven't really got much of a space to play with and then just a, a tiny weeny bit of the manganese violet it might not even be obvious what we're doing because it's just so small especially these little ones. I'm just swapping the pencils over as I go. Hello, Dan. Nice to have you here. Hope I haven't missed anybody. If I have, then hello. <laughs> Let's try this one. I might just do a bit of mauve down the edge and then this manganese violet bringing that to a gradient and just leaving a little bit of white at the edge of the window just for contrast oh jennifer's here hi jennifer thank you for joining Absolutely loved your um, St. Patrick's Day video, by the way. I love the three images that you've um, created for the, for the um, St. Patrick's Day, but I particularly love the one that you were colouring on stream that day. So what's everyone been up to this week? Anything exciting? <laughs> Let me live life vicariously through you guys. Let me know what you've been up to. Yeah, I would use purple in the windows, Jeanette, if you're trying to, to do it in this fashion, because I think green will get lost. There's too much green on the towers. Once we've done this, which should be done fairly quickly, we can start on the next page for the stream, which I put a poll out for on the community tab. And I was asking, would people want to see Kirby Roseanne's or Johanna Basford or I think I said different portraits, things like that. And the overwhelming score was for a Kirby Roseanne's page. So that's what we're going for. And then I asked what book? And the book that won the poll was Worlds Within Worlds. And then I said, which page do you want me to do? So the page that won was the, the shoe page. I'll show you very soon. But I've already done one of the shoes. I've just used the wrong colour there. Too busy gabbing. 
Uh, I've already done one of the shoes quite a long time ago, so I'm going to do the other one that's on the opposite side and we'll do it completely different. Sandra's renovating a bathroom. Okay, are you completely renovating all new suite or is it just decoration? Emily's painted her armoire. Ooh, did you use that really nice um, chalk paint that people use on furniture when they're like up, upcycling furniture, I think they call it? What colour did you go for? Barbara says, I'm very excited. I'm organising two colouring workshops in Belgium and half the places are booked in only one evening. Oh my goodness. Why don't I live in Belgium? <laughs> I would definitely come. That sounds incredible. So what are you going to do there then? I, I mean, you hosting it? Are you going to um, be teaching people live, like colouring techniques? Or what's the, what's the plan? Sandra's doing everything in her bathroom. <laughs> it's green with a bit of variation on the doors. Ooh, what, like a foresty green? It was meant for the persons of the closed towns, but actually my followers want to join too. Even one from Paris. Oh my goodness, see how much you are loved, Barbara, in this community. People will travel hundreds of miles to be in your presence. <laughs> it's true though, like, every time I watch Barbara's streams... I'm just more and more in awe of what she's doing on the page. It's like magic. Lots of medical appointments for Jeanette. I'm sorry to hear that. I hate that when it's it's your calendar's full of appointments. It's just, oh, we all get those weeks where there's just something on every single day and can't wait for that week to be finished with just cabinet paint nothing too fancy i'm teaching live in a beautiful place under the roof full of daylight oh my goodness you have to take loads of pictures it'd be really cool if you could um have it a live stream of it as well and sell tickets for the live stream that'd be really cool just finishing up some videos and instructions to clear my head a bit ahead of easter yeah easter's come so early this year what is going on like, I know that as soon as Christmas is over, we've got Easter eggs in the shop, but you always think you've got a bit more time and then Easter's suddenly arrived so early. I've still got to get some Easter eggs, but the problem is they won't last if I buy them now. I'll be eating them by nightfall. Doing the downstairs in Lord of the Rings Hobbit theme. I think I saw your post, actually. Did you do, um, I think you did a Instagram story. I'm sure I can remember sort of tapping through and I saw that Lord of the Rings because you've got like a the, the ring, something made into the ring. It looks amazing. I love Lord of the Rings. Oh, your grandbabies are coming. You'll love that. That'll put a pet back in your step. Easter has the best candy and treats. I've got to agree with you, Jennifer, because as much as I love Halloween, Halloween sweets just don't, they don't cut the mustard for me. Big block, a big egg of milk chocolate. Yes. Much better. So I'm just doing some very simple blends here there's nothing nothing major going on it might not even look like it's glowing really because we don't have anything on the outside of the windows to make it look glowy but at least it's tying in with all of the colors that we've already used the palette is very very simple and very limited on this um, and i think that keeps it nice and nice and cohesive but i'm looking forward to using some more different colors on our next page The key catch ball by the front door is the one ring. That's it. That's what I saw. Bit of a cool idea to have like a downstairs bathroom themed as Lord of the Rings or something like that. Just a little hidey hole, little hobbit hole that you could completely transform. Chocolate tastes even nicer when it's egg-shaped. I'm sure it does. I think they put something in it, you know. 
to make it taste nicer. What pencils are we going to use on the next page? Well, that is a question that I thought I would leave until tonight. So you can all tell me what pencils you want me to use. Bearing in mind it is a Kirby Roseanne's book, so I think most pencils should work on that paper. But um, yeah, what do you reckon? I don't know if we should do polychromos again because we've just done it. So let's let's change it up, do something a bit different. So I've got Prismas, I've got Black Widows, Holbeins, um, Artex. What else can I throw in the mix? Starjoy. Doe went light fast. Let me know. Um, we'll have to put it to a vote. Sandra says ink tents. Do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always scared of ink tents. I feel like I mess up and I can't use them properly, but I will have a go if everyone wants me to. I want to get into using them more because I see other people using them and I think, oh my goodness, how do you get those results? Nana says Artex, Mel says Black Widow. So we've got three different pencils so far. <laughs> uh, do, 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 do. Okay, so I think we've done all the windows. So let's move on to the flowers then. I think, I think we're going to do these purple as well, to be honest, because in the colours that we've been using, apart from gold, we don't really have anything else other than green. So I might do the centres of the flowers gold with purple petals, what do we think? No admittance except on party business. Oh, that's amazing. That's brilliant. I love that. Not familiar with Kirby Roseanne's paper, Holbein's. Could use Holbein's. Um, the paper's all right. It's, um, I've forgotten actually, let me feel it. Yeah, I mean, it's got tooth to it. It's got a bit of tooth to it. Uh, 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 uh. Holbein's or light fast, not many tutorials with those Black Widow or Prisma. <laughs> no, I don't know. We're, I think we're going to have to put it to a vote, aren't we? Barbara, would you like to do the honours, please? If we just get everybody to write down what pencils they think I should use, and then we can count them up. If you don't mind, please. Jennifer's been wanting to pull out her whole binds. They've been neglected lately. Yeah, again, it's you, you kind of get used to using a certain type of pencil, don't you? Like, And you, you kind of start producing the best effects with them and you don't really want to, to change it up. Um, but it's a shame, isn't it? Because we've got all of these beautiful art supplies and they need to be used. That's, that's the purpose. So for the golds, by the way, I'm using Bista and green gold. So I'm just doing a little bit of the Bista at the bottom portion of the center. Oh, thank you, Barbara. Barbara's going to count up all of the votes. And then I'm just going to use the green gold to do a little bit of a, a gradient blend. But again, we've, we've not got much room in this book. It will be nice to work with a larger book after this. So we've got so many teeny little spaces, it's hard to really make a good, a big impression um, with the blends and stuff. Uh, Laurie, yes, they do. If you go to, let me think, I can't remember if it's Jackson's Art, I think it's Jackson's Art, they sell Holbein's open stock. I think it's Jackson's Art pretty sure right so I've done all the middles Yvonne's been to the cinema what have you been to see I want to go and see that new film uh, Late Night with the Devil but I've been getting migraines lately and I, I don't want to I don't want the big cinema screen and the flashiness and everything to set it off so I'm a bit 
cautious about going. The green blend on the building is stunning. Thank you so much. It means a lot coming from you, Jennifer. All right, I'm just putting a little bit more bister in there to, to darken the contrast a little bit more. And then we'll move on to the purples and then we'll just do a couple of white dots and things in the background and we should be done. We can move on. So again, just going back to my purples, I'm gonna do it very, very simply. I'm not gonna do it every, every petal individual. Let's just keep it simple because I think you can tell I'm ready to move on from this page now. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see what people, what did uh, Yvonne watch? Not told me. Yet. Oh, The Breakfast Club. Oh, yeah. I've seen that before. I've, I've only seen it once. But it is like, it's like a cult classic, isn't it? My granddy and daughter saw Immaculate said gory and creepy as, right. Not gonna, we're not gonna go into anything creepy, but yeah, I will definitely want to see that. Um... Barbara's voting for Holbein's. We've seen, I'm seeing a lot of Holbein's here. Laura's going to see the new Ghostbusters. I haven't even heard that there is a new Ghostbusters. Is it another um, female cast one? Is it like a sequel to that? I don't think I saw that, the female one. Obviously, I've seen the originals loads. Claire, do you ever use Derwent Colour Soft? Um, not really. I mean, they're not bad pencils. I do like them, but they're not something that I would reach for. I think when I did my review of them, I mentioned that they were quite easy, easily broke, easily breakable, um, crumbly. Like I say, they're just not something that I would reach for necessarily. Now, the Derwent drawing pencils I am in love with, but they only come in, I think, 24 or 36 colours. Might even just be 24. Um, but the, the makeup and the pigment of those pencils, just delicious. Hello, Suzanne. Guess what I got? <laughs> I was just telling everybody at the start about how rubbish this Black 3.0 was and how I wish I'd bought the flash first. If anyone needs any polychromos, open stock, cool pens, I'm a three for two sale. Oh, good. Thank you for letting everybody know about that. I think um, Gem at the Colour Cave, she's got polychromos for sale open stock as well. I know, it is so nice. I was just saying to everyone how crap the Black 3.0 was and it's so rough and horrible and it's like ruined the background of the page. And then I tried that flash paint and it was so smooth and I was like in love. So I'm really rushing with this at the moment, trying to get it done. So we can move on to our Kirby page. Holbein have won the vote. Right, okay. We're doing Holbein's then. Haven't used them in a while. So that'd be interesting. I'm not sure how they work on Kirby paper either. So it will be another experiment, I think. I can't think I've ever used them on a Kirby page, but I might have done. I've missed that one out. No, it's a follow-on from the originals. There is one before this. It's so good. Oh, it, oh right, okay. Follow-on from the originals. Um, I'm just thinking whether I've seen, like, a trailer for that. Has it got someone from Stranger Things in it? Or am I thinking of something totally different? We should live closer to teach me. Oh, I would love that. I would absolutely love it if I had, like, somebody that lived next door or nearby, you know, that we could just go and colour. But, alas, nobody around here. 
Wasn't keen on the all-female one except for Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> yeah. Um, like I say, I didn't watch it, but it's not something that I thought I would be keen on, if you know what I mean. Not, not because it was, you know, female, but it was just the whole remaking it with females almost to make a point that, you know, we're going to remake everything with females. Like, they're on about doing a female James Bond and stuff. And like, yeah, fine, um, go for it. But sometimes when they do things for the sake of doing it, it annoys me. Suzanne is using Holbein's on your next one. Oh, Holbein twins. Um... What else have we got? Can't wait to see what we do. What black paint do you recommend for backgrounds? Right, it's this one. Jennifer, it's called Le Franc Bourgeois. Le Franc Bourgeois. <laughs> um, it's flash. It's an emulsion. It is so nice. Do not get the black 3.0. Definitely go with that one. What a super gathering. Love to colour with others. Yeah, thank you, Barbara. That's the one, um, Jennifer, if you want to type that in. Yes, there's one of the boys from Stranger Things in it. Yeah, then I have seen the trailer for it then because I just have a vague recollection of seeing that. Right, pencils away. We're going to get some white going now. So I've got my Uniposca in the size PC1M. That is my favourite size to use because it is. Um, it has got a fine point on it, but it's not like the smaller one with the metal tip because I find that gets clogged really easily. So I'm just going to grab a piece of paper, just make sure we've got nothing on the end. <laughs> That's me trying to do a French accent. Okay, right. Let's see what I want to do on here first of all then. Um... I've already added some white to the crystals at the bottom. So what I'll probably do is let's just do some, let's just do some stars and see what it looks like. Different, different thickness of dots. Can't go wrong with your white dots. I'll zoom you out just slightly so that you can see the whole page. Thank you, Emma. The black has made it pop. Yeah, I just wish it was smooth because it's really like rippled the page in the book. Does the Lefranc do that, by the way? Does it like, because I know obviously it's a wet medium, so it's going to ripple the page a bit. But I feel like this one's just, <laughs> it's, I've had to lay it on that thick that it just feels, it feels like it's about four pages thick, you know? Oh, you're going to love it, Jennifer, honestly. Like, I've only used it, literally, to do a little swatch. But after using that black 3.0, it was like painting with, just painting with, them. Um, what's something really soft and smooth? It's just really nice paint. <laughs> If you put paper over it, could you iron it? Possibly. Possibly. I feel like I probably could have... Oh, I've got a fly. I feel like I probably could have um, laid a brick with how thick it was. Like, it was proper... You know, I could have got a trowel and shoveled it on. It's like velvet paint once it dries, don't you see it? No, there's no brush strokes. That's, that's it, exactly. It's just so smooth. Yeah, butter, exactly. Just coming in your castle is awesome. Thank you. You know what you mean about having the thickness? It really does make the page heavier. It does. Let's get on with this quickly and we can move on. So we're doing Holbein's, right? So the next question is, what kind of colours? Are we going to use a colour cube card for this one? God, try and say that when you draw a colour cube card. Are we going to use a palette from there? Or are you all going to tell me what colours to use? 
I like the fact that this is collaboration. I don't just want to come on and just be like, right, this is what I'm doing. I mean, nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, I love watching people just making the decisions and, and doing it. But I like to, I'm a crap decision maker. So I like to have, you know, help from you guys. Colour cube card would be cool. If Suzanne ironed a page, it would be carnage. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can only imagine the foibles you would get up to trying to iron a page. I think the white dots are helping, aren't they? Like, I suppose they're helping to make it seem like this is a floating island in the middle of the night sky, which is what I was going for, so... Colour cube, Emily says. Everyone in the chat began to scream the first time I came with my eye into my page. <laughs> yeah, you've got to be careful. Health and safety. Catherine would faint. I don't do eye. <laughs> Your wife would just be like, where is Suzanne and, and what have you done with her? To be fair, I hate ironing. I mean, I only ever do it if I really, really need to. Like, I'm going out somewhere special and I want something to be crease-free. But as for ironing, sort of, generally, it even bores me talking about it. <laughs> uh, nobody's got time to sit there ironing piles and piles of clothes that are going to get creased as soon as you put them away. And then it's the whole thing again. I can't be doing with that. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Christine. It looks really cool and you can see the paint is thick. Oh, you can't see the paint is thick unless you're on top of it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh, my phone's falling down. More like she would be step away from the iron immediately. <laughs> yeah, you could cause some damage with an iron if you don't know what you're doing. Why did I just get the image of that Marv from Home Alone with the iron that just goes boom on his head? Folding is better than ironing. I don't mind folding at all. Like, to be fair, I just, um, I put all the kids' stuff in individual piles, my stuff, my husband's stuff, and then I'll give my eldest his, and then I'll probably help my youngest put his away because it wouldn't get done otherwise. I'm just going to put a bit of this Posca around here, but it's so thick on these edges, the paint. I almost don't want to, like, ruin the Posca. Hmm. I don't think I want to put any more. I mean, I could kind of come in here and do, do a bit of a line up here. Just to give it a bit of extra gloss, glossiness. But I don't think I want to go too far with it. I think I'm done with this page. What do you reckon? Let's zoom out. Colour cube is such a tall screen. Yeah, the colour cubes are amazing. The colour companion is also, yeah, really, really good. In fact, that's probably a better idea if I had that printed out that we could easily and quickly see and flip through, see which colour palette we want to do rather than getting the box and looking through. Right, so yes, that's it. We're done. I don't think there's anything else I want to do to that now. It's complete and we'll move on. So I hope you've all enjoyed colouring this with me over the last three parts. Now we're almost at eight o'clock, so that's good. We're going to have an, an hour on our new page. So there we go. I'll put that one away. And I'll get out the page that you have chosen which is this one. As you can see, I've already done this quite some time ago. And I thought, do I want to do it exactly the same, you know, the background and the colour of the trainer? But no, we're going to do something different because nobody said it's got to be a double page spread. So there's no rules. We'll just do what we want. So as you can see, I already did the tree ages ago at the time when I did the... Um, I did the tutorial for how to colour foliage with um, the dotting technique of the Poscas. 
So the tree is already done, the, the leaves of the tree is already done, which is fab. <clears throat> Looks really good, very glowing. Thank you so much. In a wheelchair and that very much strength and carers that won't iron. Yeah, so yeah, I get the drift. No ironing. That's it. Who needs to iron? <laughs> Right, so the book that we're working on now, just so that I'm showing it, is Worlds Within Worlds by Kirby Rosans. I've done quite a lot in this book. I say quite a lot, it's probably not even like 5% of it, but so I'll just have a flick through really of what I've done so far, if anybody's interested. I think I use Neo Colour 2s on the background of this. This is one that I started and didn't finish. So I did a different colour of the rainbow for every room. This is one that I did most recently, so I did this a couple of weeks ago. And this is another one that I've almost finished actually, I just need to do the rest of the bubbles, but for some reason I just let it go. <laughs> and then there was this one that I did as a colour along. This page has fallen out. <laughs> and then there was this one, really like this one. It didn't actually take as long as you would think, because I think I used pens on this, water-based pens. And then we've got this one, which I really like as well. The sea dragon. And have I done anything else? Probably not. No, I don't think so. I think that's it. Anyways, I'm gonna put all of my polychromos to one side. I'm not gonna put them away because it'll take forever can do that afterwards. Just to begin to return that book because I got very intimidated. Oh, that's a shame. It is, it is a very detailed book though, I've got to say. Oh, thank you so much, Jennifer. Um, just bought that book, Worlds Within Worlds, inspired by your cat picture. Oh, fantastic. So you've got the book, so you could, if you wanted to, colour along with us. Um, thank you very much, Emma. So we need to pick a colour palette for this then. Um, let me get my cards. In fact, I've got I've got both boxes of cards. So what should I, how should I do this? Do I just flick through and, and look through all of the palettes and decide? Or should I use a random generator to generate a number from 1 to 500 and then we have to use the palette that comes out? What do you reckon? I'm happy to do whatever everybody wants to see. Yeah, I did the tree at the same time as I did this tree. Because I think I did this one like on my own when I was colouring this page. And then I did this one as the tutorial. I filmed this one to show everybody. <clears throat> I haven't got the companion printed out, Sandra, otherwise I would. <laughs> what your random generator. I reckon use a palette that would match with the left page. Okay, Barbara, what do you reckon, like colour-wise then, would, would go well with this? Because I, I don't want it to be the same the same trainer if you know what I mean I know that it is essentially the same one it's got the same flowers on and stuff but I wanted it to be a bit different so what do you reckon if we're going to tie in with this page what kind of colours do we think Jeanette's saying complementary to the opposite page so that would be opposite colours right so instead of red trainer we would have a green trainer If you take a palette with reds and find another palette, it would match. Yeah. Mm, okay. So let me let me grab one of the colour cubes then and we'll have a look what we've got. Okay. I think this is number one cube. Let me zoom you out a bit. Let's just check. Yeah, this is the first cube. Um, what about a sort of day scene? The left page is sunset. Do sunrise. That's a good idea, Rivon. Or blue. Maybe make the shoes blue to match with the shop. Yes. Yeah, we could. We could use the same colours that I've used on this side, but use them in different areas. So use this blue for the trainer or something like that. What do you reckon? Because, like, let me just get the first few palettes out and see if we see anything that could intrigue us. 
So that's got red and greens on it, gold and also pink. This one is a bit more of an earthy toned palette. I'm not sure that would, would be very good for that. Um, that's just browns. This one's very bright, which does have blue and yellow on it as well, but there's no red. Shout up if you reckon this one that would work. So we've got red, purple, green and pink on this one. That could be a contender. That's basically just red and green with some brown. These ones are all blues. Don't think that's going to work. Mm, nope. That could work, possibly. That one's a bit too muted. Tell you what, I'm just going to put a few down and then you guys can choose. They're, these are all quite similar. So let me, let me see. So I don't know whether you can see the numbers. I'm going to zoom you in. Let me get sorted out. Do, 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 do. So we've, we've got palettes 1, 5, 9 and 12. I'm going to zoom you in so you can see the numbers. So this is number 1, number 5, number 9 and number 12. And they are quite similar. So I don't think it's going to matter too much on which one is chosen, to be honest. But let's just put it to a vote anyway so that it's all what everyone wants to see. Suzanne says, maybe use the blue and the yellows of the shop for the shoe and the reds for the shop on the other side, like a vice versa page. Yeah, exactly. That that was um, what I was saying earlier. That's that is a really good idea as well. We might still be able to do that with the palette that we choose. Barbara says the number five, this one is the most, one of the most favourites in the whole cube set. Sandra says the last two together. Yvonne said the one with the birds. This is nice and bright. So we've got people choosing the numbers now, so we will just give that a go, give that um, a little bit of time and see what people choose. So I'm seeing nine, nine. Gosh, everyone's, everyone's so divided. We've got a couple of fives, couple of nines, couple of twelves. Got five and twelve, nine, twelve, five, twelve. Um, Barbara, are you getting all these, or shall I do it while I'm sat? Oh, let, okay. Let me um get some paper. It's like when you're trying to find something on Netflix to watch. You spend more time finding something to watch than actually watching it. <laughs> um, right. I've got some paper. Let me get a pen. Okay. Um. I don't know if I'm supposed to be doing this or if Barbara's doing it. Let me see, let me see, let me see. So, one, five, nine, and twelve. Oh, Barbara's got it. <laughs> 12 votes for 5, 9 and 12. Right. We've got another vote for 12 and another vote for 9. So it seems as though 12 and 9 are winning at the moment. So that would be these two. So let's see what colours that we've got that match. So these blues are pretty much the same. Ooh. These blues are pretty much the same. Uh, we've got green on here that we don't have here. And then we've got a, sim a similar yellow and a similar red. So I think really, we can go with the bottom palette and just add in the green, can't we? Just combine it together. Because I've got a lot of people saying nine. 
I think probably for that blue, that lighter blue, because the rest of the colours are very similar. So if we say this palette then, number nine, with a green added in, a couple of greens added in, what do you reckon? I think that'll do it. So I'll keep them to one side. And I'll sort them in a bit. Right, let's, let's get colouring then. So I'm going to need to get my whole binds out. Everything always falls down when I'm trying to figure things out. Right. Whole binds. Where are the whole binds? Is it this one? Nope. Is it this one? Yes. So we need to find the colours now before we can get colour in. <laughs> Alright, so we've got some plain paper. We've got our thingy with jigs. And now we need to find some matches. So if I get my if I get my family chart out, that's gonna help, isn't it? So I'm just gonna put these to one side then and we'll just do it from the family chart. Could you share the Prisma numbers, please? Not not using Prismas at the moment, um, Christine. We're using Holbeins for this one. Uh, we are colouring the shoe. It's disappeared. Here it is. Um, we are colouring the trainer shoe in Worlds Within Worlds. We're just picking the colours at the moment. Right. So what I want is a really nice deep dark kind of navyish blue. So let's have a look what we've got then. So we've got a lot of... Um, what do you call it on there where the wax builds up? We've got indigo, we've got navy blue. I think navy blue might be a bit nicer because it's almost got that slight bit of green in it. So I could probably, for these two colours, get... I mean, the cobalt blue or the royal blue kind of fits more with this colour. So do we want to keep it like a true blue or do we want to go slightly greenish with the porcelain, the turquoise and the navy blue? Wax bloom, that's the one. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. I did that quite a while ago now. Yeah, Emma says navy. That's this one. On the back you have the colour touch. Of course, of course. Yeah, so, I mean, looking at this with the colour on the edge, the indigo is a definite match for this. I think I, might, I was just drawn to these greenier blues. Um, so we would want indigo and we would want nothing else. Let me see. Mind you, there is the Prussian blue. Prussian blue. And then this this steel blue is a bit more over here. This is more lavenderish. I think we might have to stick yeah people are saying true blue so I think we might have to stick over here then so if we go for indigo and let's do the cobalt blue let's skip one over so that we're not too close to the indigo royal blue and cobalt blue Okay, there we go. So that's royal blue 348 and cobalt blue 347. No, we don't want the royal blue, do we? We want the indigo. <sighs> so indigo is 460. And then next up we want... This is more of a bright orangey red and this is more of a deeper scarlety red. but I think the brighter red is going to work better. So we'll go for that. So Scarlet, we have an actual Scarlet Red in this. It's just simply called Scarlet. So let me grab that one. Scarlet. There we go. This looks very orange. Let me just test this again. Oh, that is really, really orange. 
But then again, this colour is quite orangey. Oh well, we'll do it. I'm not seeing any new comments. I don't know whether it's gone off or not. Let me go back onto it and try. The last comment I'm seeing is from Blue that says Greenish Team. Is that the last comment? Just let me know, please, if I'm missing anything or if I'm not. Oh, okay, Barbara's good. Thank you very much. Um, so we've got the Scarlet Red. Now we need something that's a little bit deeper so that we can do blends. So looking at the family chart, we're going to want to go over here to probably Crimson. Let me grab Crimson. Crimson. And that's number 062. I've got something under here that's making an impression in the paper. So we've got Crimson and Scarlet for the reds. We've got Indigo and cobalt for the blues. Mesmerised by a process. Oh, I just thought, I wonder if it's frozen. <laughs> just lurking. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay, next, we've got the blue, we've got the red. So next we need to find a green. And this is a very sort of um, basic green, really. It's a a little bit on the foresty side but it's not like a moss green or anything so that should be quite easy to choose so let's see apple green we have got an apple green on here but it's might be a bit too light but then again i'm thinking what about um apple green for the, like the lighter of the two and then sap green even though they're in different families i feel like these are just too close together in shade to be like a proper contrasty combo if that makes sense so let me try apple green and sap green so that's the sap and that's the apple and those are the greens that we're kind of going for this the um the sap isn't really as dark as i'd want it but the darker greens on here aren't of the same tone. They're not They're not of the same uh, undertone and same family. So I don't really want to go any darker with that. So we'll use those for now. And then what else do we need to do? We need to find a yellowy colour. So I wonder if this is the same yellow. Mustard. A mustard, yes. So we need to look for a mustardy yellow. Which... Probably yellow ochre. There is one called mustard here. But it's one of those colours that I've had to put in the family chart and just kind of place it in the best place because it didn't. It doesn't really fit here, but it doesn't fit anywhere else. Um, so I'm, we're going to struggle finding like a darker version of it. We can go to the yellow ochre and the cream. Those two together might make a nice yellow. Darken it with a red underneath. Emily taught me that. Yeah, oh my gosh. Um, I saw it on someone's video. I can't remember who it was, but they said use complementary colours underneath um, the colour to make it a deeper colour. I don't know if that works with pencil, does it? I'm going to have to try that. So, for example, if we use this crimson. And then put our green over it. So yeah, it does it does darken it obviously, but I can still see loads of red in it, so I'm probably doing it wrong. Um yeah, what was I gonna get out? Yellow ochre and cream. Let's try yellow ochre and cream together. So I think we've kind of hit a happy medium there. I mean, the mustard is slightly more greenish, 
So if, if I just get that one out to show you what I mean. Here's the mustard, which definitely matches a lot better with this colour. But I just don't know whether it's going to be a nice match with the other colours that we've got. Yeah, it, it does look like that on screen, it does. But I, I, all I can see is like loads of red underneath it. Maybe I'm not, maybe I've just not took enough time to blend it properly. So, I mean, we could go mustard and cream rather than the yellow ochre, but that's gonna, that's gonna be a lot more desaturated of a color than like a brighter orangey or yellow. But it is true to both the palettes, they both have mustard on them. So really we should go with the palettes. Try lighter layers rotating back and forth between the two complementary colours. So, a bit of crimson then. And then a bit of sap green. And then just keep layering them up. It's a, it's a long process, isn't it? It's probably a little bit too, a bit too tedious for me. I've, I've not got any patience. I like to get things done. Um, but it's good to know just from colour theory purposes that you can, you can do that. So let me just have a look at the chat. Look and get ready for work. Oh, hi, Josephine. Uh, 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 uh. Depends where you're buying them from. Yeah, yeah, they are they are nice pencils. I've got to say, they are different to Prismas though, definitely. Um, they're soft pencils, they're smooth pencils, but they're not buttery soft and melty and blendy like the um, Prismas are. But Nano's not a fan, so you see, it's it's different people, different pencils. I would definitely recommend Laura that you just get a couple from um, the open stock and try them. Just get a couple, like maybe a few greens or something that you could blend together so you can see the blends and how it how they work and then, and then decide for yourself because everyone's got different preferences and I would not want you blowing like 300 quid on a set of pencils that you didn't like. Um, right, so I reckon, I reckon I'm gonna go for the mustard and the cream then just to so that we're sticking close to to the palette and we're being true to those colours. So I'm going to put the yellow ochre away. And then I think, I think we've got all of our colours and we can get started. So I'll put, pop these away for now. And let's grab the page. Oh, thank you, Ems. I've had them on maybe three weeks now. They're getting ready. They're getting ready to be read on. So seeing as we do have red and blue, uh, shall we go with what Suzanne was saying about flipping the colours so that the trainer is blue this time and the shop is more of red? I think we should do that. I'm going to give them all a quick sharpen first, so just mind your ears while I do it. Barbara, yes, it was, um, I think it was you and Suzanne that mentioned that. It is a lot of money, a lot of money. If you don't like them, you're going to be gutted. So yeah, definitely buy open stock. If it's between them and the luminance, Laura, I would go the luminance. But that's because I love, like, the softer the pencil, the better for me. Whereas these, they're kind of like a hybrid wax and oil. So they are soft and smooth, but they're not, 
like they keep a point. Do you know what I mean? Oh my gosh, the sharpener is amazing. Yes, let me just scrub it. Right, so here's the sharpener that I use. It's made by Tenwin and it's 6 to 12 millimetres so it can fit all your pencils in there, even the Lumis, the Derwent Lightfast, the thicker ones will fit in there. Don't put your finger in. <laughs> um, and you can change the point length as well. Um, okay, right, let's get started then. So if we're going with the um, blue for the shoe, blue shoe, let's start there. Don't know whether any of you can hear Rosie. She just makes these squeaking noises constantly. smaller without a wire oh yeah yeah uh, there is there's a couple of different types of these sharpeners isn't they polys and prismas are the fave yeah polys and prismas are like so different from each other but they're both equally like as amazing to use a large rechargeable one i think i should have gone with that one you know because i keep having to move the um the PowerPoint, <laughs> you know, move the sharpener to the settee and it's, it gets annoying after a bit. If it had a, a USB on the end, that'd be fine because I could plug it in to my settee, but yes, it is. It's rosy. She's so noisy. In fact, I'm going to go and um, get my son to take her into his bedroom because she's making so much noise. <laughs> I was going to get her to say hi, but she's gone. She's ran away. Uh, 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 uh. Right, let's get started. So I've got the indigo and the cobalt blue. And we're going to do our shoe. So Kirby pictures I always really enjoy because a lot of the shading is done for you. So you, you don't really have to worry about where you're going to put shading and highlights. It's already sort of there. So I'm going to use the indigo just here on the shaded point. In fact, let me zoom you in. I like the luminance I've tried, so I want those, can't do both, yeah. Uh, if it was if it was a choice between luminance and Holbein's, I would go luminance. But again, everybody is different, so you're best off just getting a couple seeing what you think but if you like prismas you'll like luminance i think rosie's my little yorkshire terrier oh bye jennifer thank you so much for joining and hi kenny and karen i have flash paint in a few colors it's beautiful at the moment it's half price on cassar oh wow I'm going to have to make a note of that. Flash. Cast. Art. Because I definitely want that paint in different colours. It's so nice. Holbinds, they kind of remind me of um, Derwent Chroma Flow a little bit because they really are very smooth, but they're not they're not buttery soft. So they've got the smoothness on the page; they glide on the page, but they feel more like an oil in that you've kind of got to work with them a little bit to get them to blend. I've won a six set of colours of flash paint. Oh my goodness, that's amazing! So what other colours did you get in the set, Barbara? And are all of the paints exactly the same in how they feel on the paper and how they cover? A micro teacup, oh, <laughs> how cute. Rosie is a toy. So 
she's not as big as a standard Yorkie, but she's not as small as a teacup Yorkie either. She's a toy. I think she weighs about three kilograms. So she's like, she's a little thing. She's a tiny little thing, but she's not like micro tiny. Haven't tried the other ones. You're gonna have to let us know, Barbara. Yes, please do. Thank you very much. Um, Colourful Country Life. I always forget people's names, I'm so sorry. Um, I've had these on for about three weeks, so they're coming ready to be renewed, I think now. What do you think I should go with next time? I don't really want to do individual colours again because they charge you for, for different colours that you have. Even though I only had different colours on the tips, the bill was a lot more than I thought it was gonna be. So I need to just have like one solid colour I'm an artist, I use oil paint and pencil cranes, how are you? Oh, brilliant, nice to see you, Very. Uh, thank you very much for joining. I'm, I'm good, I'm okay. I've, I've, uh, I've had a steady week. I did have a migraine, um, when was it? <sighs> Friday, I think it was. I seem to be getting them a bit more frequently now and I don't know why, I think it could be to do with the tablets that I'm taking but I can't come off the tablets because they really help with the nausea. So it's almost like I've got, I'm gonna to have to start putting up with migraines, um, but not have nausea. <clears throat> Definitely prefer the softer pencils. You'll like the luminance then, Laura. I mean, you've already got some to try, so you know how, how nice they are, but these are definitely not um, in the same category as a Prisma, I wouldn't say. Less work blending the better. Exactly. I just, anything that's quick and doesn't take too long and I can get done and get that gratification from finishing it quicker, that's my preferred method of colouring. I know that some people, they take hours upon hours layering and things and I think it looks gorgeous, the results that they come out with. And it's, in a way, it's more dynamic because they've layered in all kinds of different colours and the transparency of the layers, you can see different hues in it and things, but... I just haven't got the patience. <laughs> so I usually work with three colours, dark, medium and light. And I think with the amount of space that I'm, I've got left from these shaded areas, I'm going to need to bring in another colour. So let me grab the chart again. And we were here, weren't we? I think I'm going to get that forget-me-not blue. Um, yeah, let's get that one. Forget-me-not blue. Which is number 326. And then we can have a dark, medium and light for our blend. Thank you, Kenny. I'm not too bad. Forget me not what a poetic name and story for this blue flower. It's such a nice name, isn't it? I wonder where that came from. Like, who named that? Luminance are incredible. Got the 100 set from Jackson's. A couple of months ago, used them in every piece. Yeah, they're amazing. In French, we call them myos, myos, myosotis. Myosotis. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder who decided to name a flower that. Because it does sound very romantic and very kind of Bridgerton, doesn't it? Speaking of Bridgerton, they're bringing out a new um, series soon. Does anybody watch that? Just want to make sure I'm not hitting the laces here. Oh, 
Oh, the Queen Charlotte one was really, really good. I was surprised how much I enjoyed that, actually. But I've got to say, the um, this season with Anthony, oh, he's just so dreamy. What's his name? Um, Johnny. Johnny something. Started with Queen Charlotte two weeks ago and almost at the end of Series 2 again, even better this time. I thought it was so brilliant. Like, I, I loved it, how they had the original Queen, Queen Charlotte actress playing the part as well as, you know, later on in life and just seeing where she came from and stuff. Oh, the legend says a knight took a myosotis flower for his beloved one, then fell in the pond and drowned because of the weight. Oh my gosh, that's one heavy flower. He cried, forget me not, while sending the flower to his beloved one. <gasps> that's that's quite um that's quite sad that story. It's a bit of a tragedy. But it's nice though, like you say, it's very poetic. So I'm just doing the tongue of the shoe. Do you call it the tongue? The bit of the shoe that's underneath the laces. I always thought that's quite funny. Means the weight of the armour. Oh. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> yeah, that would make more sense. <laughs> Yes, it's an awful legend, but nobody will ever forget the night in love. So in a way, that's very romantic. Yes, it is. It's romantic. Very tragic, too. Hello, Nicole. Nice to see you. Sad and romantic like Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Yeah. We did Romeo and Juliet for our exams at school. I think we talked about that on a different stream, actually. They are the flower associated with Alzheimer's. Oh, well, yeah. Makes sense. That's really sad as well when you think about it like that. I've had two grandparents with Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, dementia, you know that. They're all kind of clubbed in together, aren't they? <clears throat> Didn't know the word armour in English. Oh, <laughs> Well, it was funny to have that um, picture in my mind of someone picking a flower that was so heavy they fell in, in a lake. So... <laughs> At least it gave me a bit of amusement. My grandma was just diagnosed with early onset. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's a horrible, horrible thing. But it affects everybody so differently. Like, I know people who have been gone from being themselves completely as, as normal as they were, and then all of a sudden it comes on so extremely um, and it completely changes the personality of the person. And um, and then I've known it with my grandparents, particularly where it kind of crept on over time. And it's almost like you lost a little bit more of them every time you saw them, you know. Um, it's really sad. I always say it's like it's almost like you're grieving them before they've gone because the person that you know is, is they're in there somewhere, but they're being shrouded by this horrible disease. And yeah, it's. I wish they'd find a cure for it. I always remember someone saying, pull your tongue out, meaning from a shoe, and I pulled out my tongue. <laughs> That's something I'd do just to be annoying. My husband's sister had it early. She was in her 50s. That is really early. But you hear of it. You hear of it more and more. Hasn't shown any real signs yet, so I'm terrified when it starts happening. I know. <sighs> Took eight years, horrible, cruel disease. Yeah, I mean, like I said, they can go from being being normal to being full-fledged dementia really quickly, or it can happen over years. And in some instances, I don't know which one is worse. I really don't. Like I say, I've watched, watched two grandparents go through it. It's just such a terrible thing. I, 
I'm just trying to figure out whether this bit is part of the tongue or whether it's part of the tree. I think if it was the tongue, it'd be too, too much above the shoe. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. What do you think? Is, is this bit and this bit the tongue or is it the tree? My grandmother is starting to get dementia. She'll be out for hours at a time before she snaps back. Yeah, it's, it's awful. About dying multiple times. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can see why they would say that. Okay, so I've got two people saying tree. Oh my gosh, don't worry about it, Sarah. We're all here just to chit chat, aren't we? Um, and it's not all going to be sweetness and light. We want, we like to to communicate with people and, and tell people how we feel. And that's not always always good, is it? So I think it's nice that we've got this community where we know we can share these things. Um, oh, tree, 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 couple of tongs. First bit tongue, second bit inside shoe. Mm, first bit tongue, second bit inside the shoe. I'm getting confused. <laughs> or just the tongue. It looks like the same pattern as the tree root. Yeah, it does. I'd say tree, tree. I'm just thinking if we start, if we end the tongue there, I don't think it will make much difference. Do you know what? I'm going to leave it for now. And then when I come to that part with the red, I understand nothing of your stories of tongues and shoes. <laughs> Right, Emily votes all tongue. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> um, look at the other one you did. Yeah, but that's totally different. That one is um, uh, straight all the way up. So that was quite easy to decipher. But this one's a bit more difficult. Let's know the others that have gone through it so we've got someone to talk to. Exactly, exactly. And that's what's nice about these lives is that we can, we can talk about these things live, you know, and and get that compassion from everyone. Hi Emma, no worries. Um, let's get started on the outside bit of the shoe then. So the shoes can talk. <laughs> we call it a paw, a paw of a shoe. Don't you think it's amazing how different countries, different cultures, different languages have all these different names? Like the other day on Barbara's stream, she was talking about the game Simon Says. And in uh, in France, in Belgium, they call it um, Jack Says, like Jacques, I guess. But it's the same game. It's the same game played between different languages. Never been brave enough to colour these pages, but seen some amazing ones. Yeah, they do look... I mean, the thing about the Kirby pages is that they're so detailed, they can be really daunting to look at and think about colouring. But when they're done, the result is just so nice and, and it just makes you want to colour another one. And then you, you feel the same again as you go on to the next page, but you keep getting really nice results. And the fact that it's got all of the shading as well really helps. So that's what I'm doing here really is I'm just finding all the areas of shading that Kirby has drawn in and colouring over them with the darkest colour, the indigo, and then I'll just build it, build the other colours into the white until it's all covered. Portuguese we say the little king says oh that's so cute 
Jacques Adi. Jack, Jacques Adi? Jacques Adi Adi. <laughs> Make it look really easy. Thank you. Find out that some here people call the British Bulldogs game Canada Goose, which is way better. Oh, like we would just call it Bulldog. If if it's the same game I'm thinking of, where you're on the playground and you, it, do you have like a group on one side and a group on the other side, and then something happens in between? I can't remember. It's been such a long time, but I know we used to call it Bulldog. Simon says says. <laughs> Kirby is one artist who doesn't intimidate me to colour. I've already completed two books and work. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of work. Because, I mean, they're super detailed pages. Some of them really, like, hyper detailed. I get confused from so many details. I've learned that it helps me to colour the background first. I can then see the image better. Yeah, that I've, I know of quite a few people who do it that way. I think, for me, I've got into the habit of colouring the subject and leaving the background until last. But I can definitely see how that would help with kind of colour choices and things like that. And I thought the name was Jackady. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I'm trying to think what other games we used to play at school. Obviously Kiss Chase with the boys. Um, obviously Tag. Um, what else did we used to play? Do you remember, like, mid-90s when the Cat's Cradle came out and they were all the fashion to have the Cat's Cradle? It was like a piece of elastic. I think they were out in, like, the 70s or whatever, but they came back in the mid-90s. And everybody had this piece of elastic and they were all doing these, these movements with them to tie them into different shapes. I remember when that came out and I remember I was big on, like, pogs. Pogs and tazos. What you call Indian ink in English, we call Chinese ink in French. Oh, really? That's funny. I thought it was called Indian ink because that's where that originated or the colour originated, but maybe not. Just colour over the details, yeah. It's probably easier to do that. Telephone, Duck Duck Goose, Red Rover. I remember Duck Duck Goose and uh, Wink Murderer. Wink Murder, they used to call it, something like that. Detail is always hard. I do detailed oil paintings and the fine motor control takes so long. Oh my gosh, I can imagine. I don't know if I've ever tried oil painting, but I know they say it's not easy. And it takes so long to dry as well. Remember the cat's cradle? <laughs> yeah, we've gone for kind of royal blue blend on the shoe. It's raining outside, I can hear it. We've not had rain all day. Yes, and all the jump rope rhythms, yeah. I used to be really scared of doing jump rope because I was frightened to death of tripping over the rope and smashing my teeth on the floor. Yeah, Cat's Cradle in the 60s. I knew it was like an older game. Did anyone else play televisions in the background or was that just my school? What, what do you mean, like a, a game called televisions? Thumbs up, thumbs down, yeah, I've heard of that one. Did you all play dodgeball? No, not it's not really um, something that we played in England, I don't think, dodgeball. We have bilingual packaging in Canada, so it always says on the packaging, India ink, Chinese ink. All oh, right. So where does it actually come from then? I'd laugh if it comes from somewhere really random like Hawaii. Love pogs. I've still got loads of pogs and tazos in the loft. It might be worth something in about 300 years. Oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying it. That's really nice to know, because you know what I'm like. I always think I'm probably boring the life out of you all, but... It's nice to know that you're enjoying it. Okay, 
kids can't play dodgeball or Red Rover in schools. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I remember playing Knuckles, but it got so bad my school banned it. Is that where you just literally punch each other's knuckles? <clears throat> I remember there was one at school that the kids, the boys did mostly, and it was like you had to scratch the back of your hand while saying the ABC, so like A, B, C, D. And once you get to like R or something, your skin would start to break. And all the lads had all of these big like sores on their hands from doing it. And I, God knows why that was a trend. Gross. India ink was first invented in China, but the English term Indian ink was coined due to their later trade with India. Nice. Good to have the info. You used to have everyone in one side of the playground and one person on the bench the other side called out the letters to take a step forward for every time your name. Ah, yeah, I think I remember that now. Yeah. I wonder why it was called televisions. <laughs> Kirby. Oh, my goodness. Used to play Kirby after school every night with my friend on the street. It's funny, isn't it? All the things that seem to translate over, over different countries. I'm in the UK, we did dodgeball, but I'm wondering now as an adult, it was because I was the only one with a disability and couldn't get... Oh, that's really sad. I can't remember ever doing dodgeball. It was, I'm sure it was more of an American thing. I know we did volleyball sometimes, not very often. Conquer's a band as well, yeah. Everything's gone mad. Everything's gone mad with what they're banning and stuff now. It's crazy. You don't know what you can say anymore that's... Not going to offend anybody. It's obviously nobody wants to offend anybody. Probably not. I don't want to offend anybody, but at the same time, it's you're almost you're almost scared to open your mouth sometimes. I mean, I've had I had a comment from a lady last week on um, last week's live because I was talking about um, meals that I like to make. You know, like making. Um, slow cooked lamb and stuff and I'm pretty sure that this lady must have been um, a vegetarian or a vegan because she really took umbrage to the fact that I was talking about about that um, and sometimes you just you just have to say I'm just me and if I offend you I'm really sorry I don't mean to but I can't I can't police every single word I say you know otherwise it's not not going to be I'm not I'm going to be worrying about everything that I'm saying. It's not going to be natural, is it? Rounders. Oh, my God, I love rounders. I really like rounders. I didn't like hitting the ball so much as catching it. Took umbrage. Is that like a, is that a, a UK term? <laughs> Not like Dolores Umbridge, but yeah, I guess that's where her name come from. I'm pretty sure I've coloured over one of the petals of this flower, but I'm not bothered. I think I've done it there as well. You do you, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I think if you just stay true to yourself and people people who know you and have got to know you, like you've probably got to know me over the, the years that I've been doing this, I think you know that I'm not, I've not got a bad bone in my body and I wouldn't want to purposefully offend anybody with anything that I said. You know, it made me sick to my stomach to think that somebody was upset by something that I said. So um, I guess you can... You can just be safe in the knowledge that I wouldn't ever say anything on purpose. But at the same time, things can slip out and it might not be a PC thing to say and, you know, all that jazz. Why we watch you are genuine and yourself. Yeah, I try to be. Um, sounds better than the choking game. Oh, my gosh. That's horrific. 
Just assumed it was after Dolores Umbridge. Yeah, it is. To take umbrage, to take um, offence, I guess, is what it means. 34 and I'm just learning that. I'm 30... How old am I? I'm 35, I'm 36 in May. So I'm almost the same age as you. I'm just going to do the back bit of the shoe now and then we can move on to the next colour. Yeah. <laughs> take offence, take umbrage, take, um, I don't know. Yeah, just take offence, really. I think that's most of the darker bits of the shoe, apart from, obviously, the, the rubber bit at the bottom. So I'm going to move on now to cobalt blue and see how much we can get done in the next five or ten minutes. So again, I've, I've, it's really, really simple. I've just coloured in all of the shaded areas with the darkest colour. I'm then going to move from the shaded areas into the white with the mid colour, but I'm going to leave some space for the lightest colour. It really is that simple. So breaking down Kirby's images like that should be really helpful for people who are a bit daunted by all the detail. Going to be 38 next month. Oh my god, I was thinking that today. I was thinking, oh my gosh, I'm 36 next. That's like going on 40, isn't it? I still feel about 14. Always say, no matter what we do or say, there's always going to be someone who's upset by it. Exactly. You could be, I heard this somewhere before, you could be the juiciest, ripest, most beautiful peach on the tree, but there's still going to be people who don't like peaches. So, whatever you do. Is you're going to offend somebody somewhere. <laughs> it's too easy to say something in a message which can be taken the wrong way. Yes, it is. It is. 58, we feel old, but I bet you don't, I bet you don't feel old, like, in, in your head, like, mentally. Because I think, I think when, um, when we see, like, somebody we consider an adult, we don't see ourselves in that light and we're like, oh my God, am I really... Am I really an adult age now? <laughs> Still feel like a bit of a kid. But I think everybody feels that. Being kind of young at heart, I suppose. And when you're young, 40 sounds old, doesn't it? But then you get there yourself and you're like, oh my gosh. I'm 70 next birthday. Oh, are you going to do anything special for your milestone birthday, Jeanette? can't please all the people yeah i'm so you're turning 34 and you say you feel old i i know what you mean because sometimes physically i feel old mentally i just feel really immature but almost didn't start a channel because i hate when people hate on me people say ignore it but it can't help it, it bothers me the coloring community is so fantastic yeah 99 percent of the coloring community is so so nice so inviting welcoming kind um and it's incredible, but you'll, you'll always get someone who's not happy about something. And everyone's entitled to their opinion. People can, people, not everybody's going to like me, um, which is fine, you know. It's just life, isn't it? Nanamo 61, you do not look 61, Nana, I'm telling you now. When I was little, I was thinking my age was old. Yeah, exactly, you do. And then you get there and you're like, oh, <laughs> not so old. Yeah, physically feel old. I know what you mean. Don't know yet. My hubby's first in the summer. So you're not going to have like a joint birthday then? Because I'm assuming that you're both 70 this year. Have you thought about having a joint one? I'm turning 59 in August. But the youngest of my generation in the family, people don't believe how old I am. I'm just trying to look at your little picture, Yvonne. I can't, it's too small for me to see, but I'm sure you don't look 59. But I mean, so what's wrong with looking your age as well? I think we've all got, especially women, have got this, um, this cultural pressure to look younger than they are. And why can't we grow old gracefully, you know? 
Um, it's like people who have a lot of work done to their face, like celebrities and stuff. I mean, fair play to them if that's what they want to do, fine. But I just feel like it's been so long since we've seen a normal face, you know, and not the same, the same um, expressions and stuff like that. Like I love a good character, characterful face. Hi, I'm Roni, brand new here today. I'm a vegan, so delighted to come across your, across your live stream. I don't care at all that you eat differently from me. Oh, thank you so much and welcome to the channel. I'm really glad to have you here. Um, yeah, and I've got nothing, I've got no problems against anybody that's got different views to me either. Um, I just think that we should all be able to, to express our opinions about things without like falling out over it, you know? It's just we're all adults and sometimes healthy debate and difference in opinion is a good thing because otherwise if everyone was the same it'd be so boring wouldn't it <clears throat> i'm lucky i have no wrinkles but don't wear any makeup oh you are lucky although to be fair we've got good skin on my mum's side of the family um i've got italian on that side and my nana was 89 when she died and she barely had any wrinkles my mum's not got many wrinkles and I always get ID'd in the shop because I look a lot younger than I am, apparently. So I think there's something good about the skin in my in the, in the maternal side of the family, definitely. Taking my two best friends on a trip for the weekend instead of a normal piece of cake and coffee. <laughs> Why not? Where, where are you going? Where are you off to? 42 don't care about age just the amount of time we've been on the earth however I do like it when people think I'm younger than I am and you know what's funny is when we were young and we were trying to buy fags and um uh alcohol or whatever we'd always be really annoyed if we got ID'd and yet now it's like such a compliment to get ID'd so funny so good to see things from someone else's point of view even if you don't agree exactly because sometimes that's what you need is you need to hear other points of view and it opens your mind to things. And people say, you know, people change over the life, like, oh, you've changed. And it's like, well, yeah, because that's naturally what people do. People change. They hear different opinions and they think to themselves, does that make sense to me? Does that resonate with me? And if it does, then they can change their opinion. Um, and that's natural and normal for humans to do that. <clears throat> the world is big enough for us all to have our own ways and beliefs and let others have their own exactly It'd be boring if we're all the same it would not sure if you saw my comment. Let me just scroll up. Uh, I like the saying, you're not everyone's cup of tea, but I drink coffee, so do one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you do just want to, to sort of lash out in that way and just say, well, you know what? If you don't like it, go. But I think for me, I'm such a people pleaser and I really take it to heart when, when I've, whenever anybody mentions that I've said or done something that upset them or, or whatever I really take it to heart because I feel people's pain quite a lot like I'm quite empathetic in that way I'm just trying to move my book out of the way so I can get you on screen properly Don't know yet. Don't feel like a big party for my birthday like most people do. Just want my closest friends around me laughing and drinking wine. That sounds ideal. It really does. <sighs> How do you enjoy the whole bun after the polychromos? They're definitely softer. And it's it's nice, actually, that I've got more space to, to manoeuvre on. I mean, the Small Victories book is lovely and everything, but you can get a little bit annoyed colouring tiny, tiny things. 
so much, you know. Like the tiny stuff, the tiny illustrations have become really um, popular, haven't they? And yeah, I think there's definitely a place for them, especially when, you know, you, you're an artist like Johanna, because everything she touches turns to gold. But I think colouring little tiny things for me can get just a little bit wearing over time. So it's nice to have a bit more space to work on and really see these blends come together. I'm ultra slow do layers. Yeah, I was saying about that earlier. People who um, colour in layers, I really take my hat off to you because I've just not got the patience for it. Same clay makes you feel so upset. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Python's going, thank you so much for joining. It's almost time for me to go as well. I'm just going to see if I can finish this blue. And then we'll resume next week. I think everyone's problems are my fault somehow. I overthink so much. Yeah, I'm exactly the same as you, Yvonne. And I really feel like I feel other people's hurts as well. And I always overthink things and worry about things that probably wouldn't even come to fruition. All right, thank you for joining, Nana. I'm going to be off it's very very soon i'm just going to try and finish the middle blue bits for, of this it's five years between me and my younger sister she got served alcohol with that id before i did i was telling this story last week i don't know if you were here but my sister always gets um i, I always get id'd and my sister doesn't because they think she's older than me and she's five years younger so i'm the same as you pickle I bought the kids colouring book by Hannah Carlson. You showed me a video. Simple drawings, lots of space. Oh, was it the party one or the space one? <sighs> Bye, Mandy. It's called being an empath. Look it up. It's like a superpower. <laughs> yeah, I've heard of it before. Thank you so much for going live. It's fun to chat with all of you. Happy to hear. Okay, lovely. Thank you so much for joining. I'm still kind of shocked every week when people turn up, to be honest. <laughs> but that's that's my own self-esteem. Um, how do I find you again next week? Right, so if, if you subscribe to the channel, you can click like a little bell notification or a little bell symbol, and it should notify you when I go live. But if not, just try and remember to come back to the channel at 7 o'clock British time. Now, wait a minute. That's something I need to think about because our clocks go forward on Saturday. So it's going to be it's going to be seven o'clock my time, but it's going to be an hour ahead for whatever time it is for you guys. So whatever time you come on to my streams, I always say seven o'clock my time. It's going to be an hour ahead next after next week. So, yeah, I did mean to mention that earlier. But um, I'm going to make a. A video like um, I'm going to set the live up and share the link to it on Facebook and Instagram so that you can click the notification on that particular video and it should tell you when I'm going live but um, yeah it will be an hour later than it has been um, yeah so I think I think I've coloured all the mid blue bits and then we can just go in straight in with the Forget me not blue, the lovely romantic blue <laughs> that Barbara told us about. So, yes, um, let me just check the rest of the chat. In Belgium, we changed time too, so it remains the same. That's great. Everyone else's time has already changed, so it should be what it normally would be. Okay. Pre-ordered fairy tales and folklore. Can't wait to have it here. Thanks for helping that happen in. Oh, my gosh. I'm so excited for that book, honestly. Yeah, so uh again thank you so much for joining i really hope you've enjoyed tonight's stream um we finished our page in small victories which i think it looks quite sweet and simple really and uh didn't turn out as bad as i thought it was going to with the haze and stuff so yeah 
brilliant thank you so so much for joining me i hope you can come back next tuesday i would love to speak to you again and see what you've all been up to and uh, between now and then i'll be doing a couple of book reviews so look out for those and yeah i think that's it thanks so much for watching everyone and uh, i'll speak to you next week bye